Great. Uh, I'll yield the remainder of my time, but appreciate the guests being here and appreciate the chairman for hosting the committee. Senator Vance, uh, Senator Van Hollen of Maryland is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank all of you for being here and for your testimony. Um, earlier this month, the FTC released its annual report on consumer activities, and uh, they reported that my state of Maryland uh, is among the top five states uh, with the highest per capita rates of reported fraud. And this has been an ongoing uh, issue in Maryland as around uh, the country, and it takes all forms, uh, as the conversation today uh, has indicated. Uh, I want to focus uh, for a moment on one area of this kind of fraud, and uh, right now the failures of our system to, to, to catch it and compensate uh, people for it. We have an open case in, in Maryland where the victim of check fraud reported the fraud right away. Uh, but their local bank, their home community bank, is still awaiting payment from the much bigger bank uh, in which uh, the check, the fraudulent check, uh, was deposited. Uh, and I'm hearing a lot uh, from Maryland uh, community banks about this. And I think their view is well expressed by a, a letter uh, that I have here from the Community Bankers Association of Illinois. Uh, written about a year ago, and I'm just going to quote a part of it. Um, Our members have been particularly frustrated because these fraudulent returns have been deposited into accounts at the nation's largest banks, and the process to determine the liability for the fraud losses and reimbursement is protracted. When this issue has been raised to federal regulators, the responses have been that it's not their responsibility to intervene in bank versus bank disputes, our members respectfully urge the OCC, Federal Reserve, and the FDIC to reconsider your position regarding fraudulent return in light of the information included in this letter. This is a letter that was addressed to them. They make the point that they're not asking uh, federal regulators to pick winners and losers. They just want to expedite this process so that those who have been defrauded uh, can be made whole and those who who were negligent in cashing a fraudulent check uh, will end up making the payment. Uh, if I could start with you, Ms. Sanchez Adams, can you speak to this issue and whether or not, in your view, the larger banks are taking advantage of the weaknesses in the system uh, to prevent um, quick payment to the local banks so that they can in turn reimburse uh, a defrauded customer. Yeah, so um, one story that um, we were contacted about was a man who sent a check to the IRS, and it was deposited into, um, I believe it was Wells Fargo account, um, and it was to the US Treasury. <laughs> and so clearly, they are not the US Treasury. Um, but they t delayed for two years to refund um, the uh, consumer's um, bank. And so the consumer, though the law says a consumer should be reimbursed by their own bank, that bank was dragging their heels because they were waiting to get payment. Um, and the consumer's bank was also a large bank. Um, so it's not like they didn't have the funds to refund the consumer. Um, and I also just want to point out another problem with check fraud and check alteration is that it's not just um, you know, them stealing it in the mail, but I've heard a lot of stories about, in particular, one that I mentioned in my written testimony, where they didn't even have checks associated with their account, and fraudsters create checks out of thin air. And because um, banks don't often provide um, written statements anymore, and they don't provide copies of checks back to consumers, it's hard for them to, to, to know that this is happening, or especially when it's altered, to know that it was altered if you don't see the check to see that it was altered. I appreciate that. And, you know, this, this, we saw a big rise in this sort of check uh, fraud uh, during COVID, but it's continued. And obviously it impacts, you know, those who don't do online, you know, transactions, mostly the elderly. Um, Mr. Bend, if you could talk to this about to this issue, I mean, obviously you've got um, members of different sizes, member banks, but this is clearly an issue that's, that's hurting community banks. Do you agree that the federal regulators should be more engaged in resolving these issues? Uh, so, Senator, I appreciate the question. I don't think anyone uh, thinks that the check fraud processing system is working as well as it could. Uh, banks of all sizes agree the timelines to process these are taking too long, and that's why the industry is taking its own steps to try and figure out ways that we can accelerate this process, such as developing a universal claim form. We see sometimes banks will file a claim with one bank, and they'll have to go iterate to make sure they provide the required information. 
trying to reduce the information the customer is required to provide. So trying to make this process easier. In terms of the regulator involvement in this, uh, I, th I agree with them that they don't pick winners and losers. I think it really, because each case is so different, uh, it really needs to be that determination between the banks. Well, I understand. Uh, you know, uh, FinCEN and other regulators, they, they do pay attention, obviously, to the the SARS reports and sort of major fraud, but a lot of this fraud that's impacting, you know, regular people um, is is falling between the cracks, and, and those regular people are uh, left holding the bag. So I appreciate that um, you, as, as well as um, um, uh, I think you, uh, Ms. Sanchez uh, Adams, also spoke to some language that we put in the FISG appropriations reporting language. Uh, I chair that subcommittee. Uh, it's aimed at creating a, more of a public-private partnership to really try to plug the holes and gaps in the system. And I understand you both agree that that would be a, a smart move. Is that right? Yes, Senator. Agreed. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks, Senator Benhal. Senator Warnock from Georgia is recognized. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, fraud is a serious problem in the United States and in this sector is growing. A Gallup study found that 8% of respondents said that they had personally been a victim of fraud in the past year, 8%. In the first quarter of 2023, reports of financial fraud per capita occurred more often in Georgia than in any other state, according to data published by the Federal Trade Commission. Forbes advisor ranked Georgia